welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at homologous series. We're going to recap the different families of compounds that you've met in National 5 Chemistry. First of all, let's define the word homologous series. A homologous series is a family of compounds. Each homologous series has similar chemical properties which is how they react. Trends in physical properties, such as melting and boiling point. And they share a general formula. The first homologous series we're going to look at is the alkenes. Alkenes have carbon to carbon single bonds. This makes them saturated. They have a general formula of Cn H2n plus 2. Here's an example of an alkene. Alkanes contain only carbon and hydrogen. This makes them hydrocarbons. They burn in oxygen to produce CO2 and water. The next family are the alkenes. They contain carbon to carbon double bonds. This makes them unsaturated. They have a general formula of Cn, H2n. Here's an example of an alkene. Alkenes also only contain carbon and hydrogen, making them examples of hydrocarbons. Alkenes undergo addition reactions. One addition reaction can be used to test for alkenes. Alkenes will rapidly decolorize bromine water. The next family are the cycloalkenes. Cycloalkenes have carbon to carbon single bonds. These are arranged in a ring structure. They are also saturated. They have a general formula of CnH2n, which makes them isomers of the alkenes. Here is an example of a cycloalkene. Cycloalkanes are also examples of hydrocarbons. The next family are the alcohols. They contain this functional group. This is the hydroxyl functional group. They have a general formula of Cn, H2n plus 2, O. Here's an example of an alcohol. Alcohols can be used as fuels. The next family is the carboxylic acids. They contain this functional group, the carboxyl functional group. They are weak acids. They have a general formula of Cn H2N, O2. Here is an example of a carboxylic acid. Because of the structure of the carboxyl group, it is always found on an end carbon. All of the homologous series are named using prefixes to tell us how many carbons are present. The prefix for one carbon is meth. The prefix for two is eth, for three 
is prop, for four is butte, for five is pent, six is hex, seven is heft, and eight is oct. The end of the name then tells us which family we have. Let's have a look at naming branched alkanes. The first step to naming a branched alkane is to find the longest carbon chain. Here, the longest chain contains five carbons and would be called pentane. We then need to number this chain from the end closest to the branches. Here we can see that we have branches on carbon 2 and carbon 3. We have two branches on carbon 2 and one branch on carbon 3. Now we need to focus on the branches. All of these branches are the same. They all have one carbon. One carbon would be methane. When this is a branch, it gets called methyl. Where you have different types of branches, they would be named alphabetically. Where you have more than one of the same type of branch, prefixes such as di and tri are used. Let's put the whole name together. We start with the numbers of where the branches can be found. Two, two, three. We have three of the same branch, so we're going to use tri, and those branches are methyls. These three branches are then joined onto a pentane chain. Now let's look at branched alkenes. The first step here is to find the longest chain containing the carbon to carbon double bond. Here we have four carbons, so this would be called butene. Now we're going to number the chain from the end closest to the double bond. We can see that on number two, this is where we have our carbon to carbon double bond, and this is also where we have a branch. Step three is to have a look at our branches. Just like with branched alkanes, if you have different types of branches, they're named alphabetically. And if you have multiple of the same branch, then prefixes die and try are used. Here we have a branch on number two. It has one carbon, so it is a methyl branch. This is joined on to a chain of four carbons on the second carbon, we have a double bond. The number two is inserted into the base of the name to show where the double bond is. Let's look now at branched alcohols. Much like the branched alkenes, we need to find the longest chain which contains the OH functional group. Here this has seven carbons, so we'd be called heptanol. We're going to number the chain from the end closest to the OH. We can see that on number two we have our OH group and on number five we have a branch made up of two carbons. We're now going to identify our branch. This has two carbons, which means it's based on ethane. As it's a branch, it gets called ethyl. Like before, if there are multiple branches, then they must be named alphabetically. And if there's multiple of the same, 
then prefixes dye and try are used. So putting the name together, on carbon 5, we have an ethyl branch. This is joined to a chain of seven carbons. On the second carbon, we have a hydroxyl group. The number is inserted into the base of the name to show where the hydroxyl group is found. Pause the video now and try these questions. Question one, name this functional group. This is found in the alcohol family and is the hydroxyl group. The carboxyl functional group has a carbon, double bond oxygen and an OH. The general formula for the cycloalkanes is the same as that for the alkenes, Cn, H2n. What homologous series does C3H8O belong to? This is an alcohol. And the test for unsaturation is the rapid decolorization of bromine water. Pause the video now and try to name these molecules. So in the first molecule we have a branched alkene. We need to find the longest chain. That has four carbons, so is butane. If we number the chain from the end closest to the branch, we can see on the second carbon we have our branch which has one carbon, so is a methyl group. The second example is a branched alkene. We need to find the longest chain with the carbon to carbon double bond. We number this from the end closest to the double bond and then identify our branch. The branch is on number four and has one carbon, so is a methyl branch. There are five carbons in the longest chain and the double bond can be found on carbon 1. The next example is a branched alcohol. The longest chain has three carbons and we have a branch on number 2 as well as the OH group. So here we have two methyl propan to all. Our final example has two carbons and a carboxyl group, making this ethanoic acid. Pause the video now and try to draw these four molecules. Drawing molecules requires you to break the name down. The end of the name tells you how many carbons you have in a chain. So here we have hexane. So we need six carbons. On the third carbon, we have one branch, a methyl branch. We then need to complete the structure so that each carbon has four bonds. As this is an alkane, the only other element present will be hydrogen. Again, we're going to break the name down. We have seven carbons in a row. We can see on the third carbon, we have a double bond. On the second carbon, there are two branches and they are of the same type. They are both methyl branches. We now need to complete the structure such that every carbon has four bonds. We can then go around and fill in the hydrogens that are missing. In this structure, we have five carbons. On the third carbon, we have our functional group. 
of OH. There are no branches present, so we can just fill in the hydrogens. In our final example, we have four carbons. This is butanoic acid. There is only one place for the functional group to be, and that is on one of the end carbons. There are no branches, so we can fill in everything else with hydrogen atoms. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards every day. Remember to ring the bell to be notified of new videos. Bye for now.